640. Uh, we're all here. Uh, so we're going to call this meeting to, to order the regular meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District for the month of September is, is convened at 640. Um, we're going to be passing around a piece of paper. If you could uh, put down uh, just your name and uh, whether you're uh, a Rockbridge, a Rockbridge, a Stockbridge, a Rochester, or another resident. That would be, that would be, be really, really very helpful. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, uh, adjustments to the uh, agenda. Yes. I would like to add a uh, dis uh, two discussion items, 7.6 and 7.7. .7. Uh, 7.6 would be uh, policies for uh, uh, cross-campus cross classroom balance. And uh, uh, 7.7 .7 would be uh, uh, clarification of, uh, of uh, details around the uh, dandelion daycare sale. Carl, are there any other uh, jobs? Uh, I'd like to put in the uh, talk about the marquee. Do you want to put it in your report? We can just address it if you want right under principles. Yeah, what under principles report if that's okay. Okay, cool. Great. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, Janie got on there. Yes, there's two, there's some, several here. Okay. His, his, if any, is another one. Anybody else? No, sorry. Great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> All right. Tainted. Uh, with the uh, adjusted uh, uh, adjustments to the agenda having having been made. Uh, we'll proceed to uh, uh, item number three, which is public comment. Sure. I have to pull them up. Do you want to repeat them for everyone here while I take out my computer? And well, I guess um, one of the questions was I asked previously. Exactly. That was that was not told to us before the merge. 
So that is an error. I don't think it was intentional, but it was definitely an error. So back to the question, if the, um, the proceeds went to pay for this study, how do you know what the proceeds are if you don't even know the expense of that building? Well, was it we don't the right, yeah, right, but we all know there's, there's money that went into it. Like, I don't think it was all that money was there to pay for, though. I don't think oh, there's okay. any so debts on the day right, building. Right, but when I sell an asset, I know how much I own it for. Right, you know how much you, you put in in the last right. year. That's right, that's right. Exactly. Um, we should have that information because it would have been paid for um, through our accounting system with line items. We should be able to pull out what it exactly. costs. Exactly, so or, what is it? Do we know? Or
years, right? I'm thinking about hopefully we keep what we've got here because we love our little school okay. and you keep your little school and it works. We'll work together with the programs. But when we merged, I thought the program was we have ours and you have yours and we work the programs. That's what I thought we were promised. Not, not oh, so when can we not afford to do this anymore? Like, it just feels, and then in all the plans with the high school, there's talks about, well, we'll have an extra hundreds, hundreds, or uh, hundreds, whatever, square footage, I don't recall what the amount was. What will we do with that? So it just seems like the movement is coming. And I just want to be in the minutes by saying there should be a vote, it should be warned as such, and we and the people need to know what is the plan. Absolutely, and if you recall, if you look at the minutes of, 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 uh, of many of our previous meetings, we've said over and over again that we need to have community, community shared meetings, we need to have long conversations with everyone about what to do, and we've said, you know, fairly specifically, and I'll say it again just to make sure we're clear, that the work that we've done so far in the main has been the fact that there's not really documentation on any of these buildings. One of the things we're supposed to do, and we're holding off on doing, for example, is uh, doing some of the, the more, in, we, it's been recommended uh, by the, the, the assessment study we just had, that we uh, uh, do some uh, testing of all the oil tanks. We have no idea how old the oil tanks are or what state they're in. Um, and, you know, a, a, an oil tank failing in February is a lot. Money. So understanding that and being prepared and knowing what our assets are and what we're supposed to do about them that is, is important. But one of the things that that one of that thing one of the things that that you know told us was that we really can't necessarily and Bonnie helped me with this. We really can't necessarily inspect the tanks because some of the inspection methods are, are fairly invasive. So we have to think about how we want to do that and, 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 and what we want to do because we've been kind of put in a rock and a hard place. With some of the knowledge that we have, but we have to do something about Underground it. Underground tanks are usually inspected by the people that provide the fuel. That they go correct. through it all the time. It's yeah. not a big deal at all. Jo Julia, okay. this is this is the issue though. We can't and, and we're still looking. Right. We can't find any documentation that right. leads us to believe that any of these tanks are less than 35 to 40 years old. Both of the fuel companies that we contacted said, yes, they do the testing. It's by pressurizing the tank. Right. And if there's a weak spot in the tank because it's old and they pressurize it to test it, they're going to blow a spot out of that tank and then we're going to have a leak that we have to deal with immediately. So that's the bind we're in with all three of the tanks, the two at Rochester, the one here at Stockbridge. In fact, we're going to, just, we're going to discuss that tonight with the board about um, how can we move forward? As one dealer said, we're kind of in a precarious situation. He's not sure what we should do. That makes sense. I can't imagine that the state allowed you to get that far because we have to do ours every some of the years. But and I think that's, if I could just add one other thing, that's one of the other reasons that Lindy and I were supportive of the engineering study because as new administrators in these buildings, right. we don't have to go over past happenings. They right. have, we can't find a lot of documentation around a number of systems in, in these buildings. So one of the things that, uh, one of the reasons we were pushing for the um, engineering study was to begin to get a handle on these buildings. Asbestos, lead paint, roofing, fire codes, oil things. Oil things. Yeah, um, that's very good. Why do they work? I just like you said, there's got tested every five years. My right. ours didn't. Right, I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, the other thing, my other question is numbers. I'm very curious about the numbers of students, and I don't mean like the assessment numbers where it's like 1.3 for a high school. I mean actual heads in the classrooms. You must have an idea of what they are. It would be usual. And I don't want the pre-K kids. No, no, there are real kids in classrooms. Well, pre k is real Right, but separate it out. I asked everyone. Uh, actually, I mean, I'm sorry. We, we weren't prepared to answer that. What we, what we can tell you is that there's 91 students at Rochester and 45 students at Stockbridge. And that is preschool. And that's pre-K to 6. Of course it is. How many do you think pre-K? I would guess we have 13, 14 pre-K kiddos. Okay. And in Stockbridge, we have 6. 6. Okay. Yeah, 
So somewhere between 19 and 20 out of that one. And how many high school kids does each town have? Uh, I don't know that. I'd have to find that out for you. Okay. I don't know. Because according to the state, it's pretty much equal. We have more high school kids in Stockbridge than Rochester, which surprised me. But we've had school choice longer, so that makes sense. Well, if you took, I mean, if you think about that, if you took the preschoolers out, it should be fairly equal because you've got six grades that are here and six grades that are going out for choice. So seven through 12, they're going out for choice, and that's six grades. And one through six are on campus, so that's six grades. So the fact that it would be pretty close sort of makes sense. You would have, probably have a little blitz here and there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. For the first, this is the first time a principal has been ever, ever able to answer that question in the last 15 years, I swear. But I think also will, between October, Figure out uh, what we paid and, 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 and what the correct amount we owe is. 
Um, obviously, one of the things that, uh, well, hopefully you think it's obvious, but we will be monitoring this process and, and uh, being very careful that we're not being lulled into the same sort of, here's a number, oh, here's another number, uh, a, a, sort of, uh, a sort of situation, and we'll be uh, paying fairly close attention to what what uh, the, the state is doing, whether they are actually certifying those numbers or saying, here's our best guess numbers for this month. Um, so we, we do not go into uh, a, a similar sort of situation next year. And again, it really would have been great if we had uh, been able to uh, tell you, tell, tell all our uh, community members before the vote went out, but unfortunately we only as a board found out uh, when the town clerk saw the bills and said, here's our right. Um, are there any questions more about the taxes? Well, can I make a sure. I think it's important that all of you know that it was really important that we did this research because, not because you're getting a more favorable tax rate and the taxes were up and now they're going to come down, but we found some things that we couldn't have known about unless we had done the study, and that is, um, in one case, there was a student going to a high school um, fairly in, in another town. Uh, there's another town with an R, or our first letter that was getting credited with the tuition from that. Uh, we didn't know that until uh, we actually went through the data. We couldn't have known that. Uh, instead of credited to Rochester, they were credited to another town with an R, started with an R. Um, That's our revenue. Yeah, we weren't getting credit for a student, one of our students. I can tell, I can name the high school, but I'm not going to. Okay, yeah. On the ADM. On the ADM. In the, the, ADM. In the tuition report that is sent out by the receiving district, because okay. the receiving district for public schools is who reports the residency. Do we check them now to make sure the, that the, the, the way this used to be done was the business managers used to do a basically a paper and pencil, and they were the final word on this. Um, the state decided that it was all going to come right out of our student information system, all electronic. It's only as good as the people that are putting the information in and the reporting that goes to the places that are the tuition districts that are being received, so, uh, that these kids are going to. There were two others, um, and they went to the same high school. Um, they were tuitioned in. One was listed as a guest student. And that was like a foreign exchange student, uh, but it was a Rochester resident uh, from a family in Rochester. And there was another one that was had a, a fluky designation like that that we weren't getting credit for. We would have never known this. And of course, now that we're getting credit for those students, it's taken away from the other districts that had those students. So we are so, checking down to make sure we're getting the credit for Yes, this well, that the first reason. year of the SLPS system no, that the agency of education is using. So there are a lot of bugs that the agency of education needed to work out in this process. And there, when I went back to them and said, are there checks and balances in place for the upcoming school year that I can be aware of so that I'm not doing this as a reactive measure but as a proactive measure, and they have given me what I need to do. So once the receiving districts that we send our kids to get their files certified, I can then, now I have the access to be able to go in and pull down their reports to their files for every single one of my buildings in the entire supervisory unit. Great. And I've, I've become a very popular man because people in other districts know about this now and they want to check their own data to make sure that they're right. I've been contacted by Central Vermont School District, which is Wavestown um, and, and Northfield, they're interested in it. Um, I've talked to people in Windsor, uh, they're interested in it, and several others have contacted me. And we're going to talk about it at my next superintendent's meeting, which is Friday. And they're all very curious about their, because they're thinking if this happened to us, then maybe they're dangerous. As far as when people are watching their numbers, making sure they're getting those credits that they're supposed to get per student, and they only have. It kids. makes a, one kid makes a real, real big yeah, difference absolutely. for you guys with these dollars. So I just so. think we would have our own check. But going forward, we have a new system in place to double check that. And again, with any new process, any new procedure, any new software, any new system, we have to work the bugs out. So I think this is unfortunate, but it happens. Mm -hmm. But we do have checks and balances that I want to make sure happen. Great. Carl? Yes. So did it go, it went to 18% tax increase to what? To uh, we're, we're, what we, we 
said the form was 2.48, so I want to say it's like 2.39. Okay. That just wasn't anywhere. Saved about $350,000. That's including um, penalty as well as the. Can I ask the devil's advocate question? I'm sure. If the tax rate is less, we were very concerned about how we had, we had voted on if the tax rate was more than what we voted on. The tax rate being less, we have to vote on that again? No, we did not. No, what are you talking A lot of times, and uh, for, for like they adjust, um, the legislature will adjust the, um, the yield rate by a penny or something in the course of the legislative session, um, where they'll decide they're going to pull something out of the Ed Fund and they'll, they'll change something. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's not uncommon that your taxes may vary a little bit from what was voted. Um, and this, you know, the, this would be kind of at the outside, this kind of variance is about the outside of what often would happen between when you voted when it comes to various, maybe a penny or so, a penny and a half. But normally, you know, you, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, you vote in a budget, and then they make their technical changes to their numbers. Um, and the risk comes around is in the range of that. Cool. Thank you. So now that we've got this information and it is in our favor, is there anything more that we as board want to do or say to the state uh, that about this whole process? That happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it would have been very different if it had swung the other way. I'm sure we would be contacting the state tremendously about our anger at this. Um, I, I, don't think, I don't think that there were issues that we need to resolve. I mean, this was a pattern. They didn't respond to the SU who was calling. They didn't respond to us. Well, who had well, one person in the state of Vermont? Right. who can figure out what, what was wrong and we have to wait. I mean, that's absurd. So I, you know, I think going forward, yeah, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again, even in the sense of communication. Right. If Bruce calls, if someone will call him back. If Tara calls, someone will call him back. So yes, I think we should send a letter to the state. And you have a very good point. There not, should not be one person who knows how to do a job, right. especially
the state board? Because I know sometimes they only go to school for certain uh, certain, certain um, grades, or they may not go into, say, they want to go to the tech center, or they want to go to a different high school for certain things. Are you talking about just high school, or are you also talking about elementary kids? Oh, the elementary kids. I, I would have that same question if we have homeschool kids who are participating in programs that we are funding, but not in the full day. Um, what type of, um, yeah, like student credit are we getting? Yeah, and how is that calculated within the town? I mean, I don't know what the medical number is, but it's like, a portion of them are a whole student, if that makes sense, depending on how many. So they are counted in the category. Not a certain room. That I don't know. It, it just depends what and how much they're here for, or at the you know, that high school or middle school level. Just depends. They basically have access to school programming that they wanted. Um, but once once a family declares that they want to go on homeschooling, it's a whole separate process. They there's a whole part of the agency that they deal with for homeschooling, and they're really, we know about them. We get lists, but that's about all. We don't have really a whole lot to do with them, but they they are allowed access if they want to come for an art class or music class or, or sport. Or some right. kind of sport. Sports um, can get expensive when they're busing. Yeah, and, and so and you know, they, they do have the right to access that. Uh, and we do get some type of credit for them. Do you know that for sure, Tara? Uh, you don't, yeah. That's, that's one of those things they talk about changing and it's going to be. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah. the way homeschool works is you can't be registered for homeschool and register at a public school. You can only be registered one place. You are allowed to access up to 40% of the school day um, in. Gen Ed, the public school, and still be considered homeschool. So you don't know what the, the public school does not get to count a student who does up to 40%. And it can be a subject area, it can, and they do it by um, these five major subject areas. So two out of the five you could do in a public school. Um, they don't count sports or extracurricular stuff as part of that 40%, so that's how it works. But you can't be registered in both. If you register in homeschool, it's not counted in the public school. And, and right now at the elementary level, neither, um, we don't have any youngsters, homeschool youngsters participating in our in our programs. So they have to ask to participate? Is that how it works? Well, they just let you know that they'd like to come and take an art class. By, by law and the state of the mind, you, you can, I can't say no. If someone comes to no. homeschool yesterday and says, we'd like to do art at Rochester, then um, they're allowed to do that because they live in the town of Rochester. And they get credit. Uh, uh, no, they don't get credit. No. Unless you go over the 40%. Correct. And then you're not a homeschool student. You're a public school student. Do we have any do, do we have any idea of how many children are homeschooled in our district? I know one state Like I said, I've got a list of the I have a list, but I haven't looked at it. I just got it a couple days ago. Uh, I will share it with the principal so they can do it all. Okay. Yeah, I think again, I think it's important to 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 know just to uh, be able to, to, to react, reach out to them, um, and as well as to, 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 to be aware in case someone shows up and says, hi there, I live here and I'm, you know, I've been homeschooling my kid, but I would like some science and math, please. Um, you know, being able to, to have an idea of who these kids are and then making sure that they're residents and they're actually allowed to access the resources that are actually
Any other questions about the tax yeah. issue? Oh, I'm, yeah, that's good to clarify for everyone. The numbers we just said you were pre-K to six. They don't have to do seven through 12. All right, so uh, let's move on to the uh, consent agenda. We have a packet of uh, minutes for uh, both the special meeting and the retreat on uh, August 2nd, as well as the regular meeting on August 6th. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, packet unless people see something uh, incorrect in any one of the uh, individual. I will be adding a bullet. I waited, I was going to wait after this meeting. Um, the public that attended the special meeting on August 2nd had um, one thing that he wanted to add in. I forget what it is, but I have his email. Um, I'm add that in. So that's on the, the uh, August 2nd special meeting. So we should wait on for those then? Yeah. All right. So let's. I would entertain a motion then to approve the uh, uh, regular meeting on August 6th. Um, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I would like to get added to my question at the end of the last two meetings where I requested at that time to not move forward with any study until the tax situation was taken care of. I said it at both meetings. I certainly remember you saying that. Thank you.
in the SU uh, when we're many of the administrators and others uh, spoke to them about uh, the area that they were most uh, involved in and uh, it was a good day, cold day. On the 26th, uh, we had our SU day, um, half day actually, and then they went back to the buildings where they're assigned at the end of the day. Uh, there were probably uh, 250 at that meeting and uh, Primarily, the, the things that I talked to them about was the literacy initiative that we are uh, working on right now. Uh, we've spent uh, a lot of Medicaid resources on upgrading classroom libraries, and uh, we have a reading coach that's working with teachers on guided reading in all the buildings. And he was able to talk, and uh, we've uh, we really think that uh, we did some sampling to find out how open uh, the teachers were to changing maybe their uh, practice in some regard, even though some of them have been teaching for a long, long period of time. Uh, and uh, we, we do feel pretty confident that they are enthusiastic about what we're trying to do. And now that they have pretty much brand new materials in their rooms, uh, they're learning how to use them and are pretty excited about using them. Um, we, uh, I have been trying uh, to work on uh, a weekly communication with all the boards about things that are going on around the uh, DSU, not only in board related things, but teacher and administrator related things. Uh, it's going over fairly well with, with all the people that receive it, and I think I send 27 or 30 copies <coughs> usually once once a weekend. Uh, we uh, I put in this press release about your situation in the last one that I sent out to everybody because I think we can all learn from this. Uh, unfortunately, it was a difficult lesson to learn, but we ended up coming out on the, the good side of it. So I can. I'm hoping that all the districts, we, we really have to be, have to put some things in place to make sure we're more careful about the data that the state receives, that it's correct before it gets, before we press that button and send it off. And uh, so um, generally, um, I'm, I make a routine of trying to visit all the schools. I'll be here and in Rochester tomorrow and then uh, three other districts on Thursday. I was in uh, three districts today uh, on the other side of the SU. And uh, so everybody seems to be fairly happy and really busy. Um, and uh, I know probably by the end of this week I'll be very tired because of getting back to it. Uh, but things are good and our numbers seem to be pretty strong in a lot of places. I know uh, uh, several of the districts are reporting uh, more kids than they, than they ended up with at the end of the year. So we're hopeful that that holds. Uh, so that's pretty much why I have unless there's any questions. Uh, hearing none, thank you, Bruce. Uh, so we're passing down the principal's report. We're sorry we didn't send it out earlier, but okay. the school happened. Um, and we wanted to have real numbers too about kids. You never know until the first day when they all walk through the door. Um, so the first item is opening our school. It went smoothly. Uh, Rochester opened with 91 students and instructors 45, and that is preschool through sixth grade. Uh, Bus routes were established or changed as needed based on who's getting picked up, who's getting dropped off, things like that. Um, Dick Schultz of Rochester is retiring after this year. Um, um, so actually in the next couple of weeks. Oh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so he's currently a bus driver in Rochester, but he's top coach and driven bus. So thank you. Uh, so so it'll, be, it'll be Butler. That it, it is all. It is another company that contract mm -hmm. uh, I can make some more. Um, but it'll still be Butler. Nick Fry's for it. All right. So Butler will find a, a, a new hire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do, do they take priority looking at what's within? You know, people within the community. Yes, they've actually. 
actually already replaced him with someone from the Okay. About how many more principal's reports do I need? Who would like more? All of this oh, year. Well, the only one, the other half doesn't have any. Oh. So basically, your chair is over. Ten. 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 Uh, before you go, one second. Does anyone, we also, one thing I did not, I did not get distributed. We have some notes on the takeaways from our retreat. Does anyone, if anyone is interested to, to, to see what the board you know, thought about, we can make you copies of that too. Okay. Same. Same. Sure. Absolutely. Just the lighting on the So no. no. Yeah. We have our handouts. So I think she's asking. Oh, okay. we have more handouts. Ah. Uh, facilities. We still do not currently have a custodian in Stockbridge. Um, the. This summer, the custodial staff from Rochester cleaned classrooms and library here, which we're grateful for. And then we had a contractor do the hallway and multi-purpose room. Um, we did do a pretty elaborate search over the summer, and I would say it was a failed search. Neither candidate understood that you have to clean a toilet. That's a key piece of the puzzle. Um, <laughs> and so currently, it's kind of all hands on deck. It's myself, it's Janet, and then teachers help out as well, which is great, but we try and take a lot of that out of them. We have reached out to a contractor for a bid, just to see, um, and that may be sitting in my email if you email about after 6 p.m. And that would be a subcontractor rather than an custodial staff to be really, um, hired by the district and not, not subcontractor? Yes. Um, One of the things we're finding, and we're not the only school finding that, is Vermont's employment rate has dropped down to near two and a half percent, excuse me, unemployment, two and a half, three percent. You simply cannot find folks. Um, and there are a number of schools that are looking for a number of staff positions. So um, it's not anything unique to us. It's just the employment situation in the state of Vermont right now. Have we, have we reached out on the Forum or? It was on Facebook, it was on the Herald, it was, okay. yeah. We pretty much tried everywhere. I'm open to, if somebody needs someone, please send them. <laughs> Her way. Do you know what rate uh, you're offering? Uh, yeah. It's based on it's time. Time. It's 0. 0.67. So it's like five hours roughly a day. Um, and wages based on experience. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a union position. So I think the starting wage on the contract. 13.65. Something like that. And then if you have more experience, you can points for that and points amount to more money. But also if you're subcontracting and they're not part of the union. Craig, Craig. Correct. Yeah. And we have to, we, that was going to be my next, my next concern is have we, uh, uh, have we talked? Have we, have we told uh, Raspovich that, that uh, we're going to be bringing in uh, the, the uh, we just honestly just got a quote that we have it. No, I guess no. Or we're we're just trying. Because that that you know that that it's a it's a it's a union job and yes. he could he could decide that where we know that we would like to hire someone to do it. want to protect those jobs, yes. And that is a, that is a good point, Carl. Right now we're even trying to find out is there even a subcontractor who's interested because it's just one small building, five hours a day, and we don't even know if we'll get anybody who's but that would be something we would have to do if we felt we were moving forward with the subcontract. And the custodial staff in Rochester is full time but it, they wouldn't really be able to have for more. Yeah, there's no one over there who who, who is interested in expanding their hours staff for a myriad of different reasons. Yep. Lily, did you check out the lead I gave you? Yeah, and that person did not want to expand their hours here. And uh those while yes, the, 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 the employees at, at, at Rochester work for the district of Rochester, going down that road and saying, well, now you're going to have to do some hours here anyways, because that's what your job now is. It's not necessarily a cat form of more to deal with the district of time either. Well, we still need the hours, though. So mm -hmm. even if we took one of our staff and we do it still full time, we would put the airport, we're still now lacking. Sure, the hours. We're, right. So but we're, 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 we're doing 80% yeah. in the two buildings rather yeah. than. So, in other facilities, uh, there was about $6,000 worth of 
work with roof repairs, make projects or elementary and high school buildings. Um, basically to fix all the serious leaks that happened last year. Um, both of the roofs are beyond their life expectancy um, and need replacing and then moving to oil tanks. Uh, we haven't been able to find any specific information that, contain, that confirms anything about any of the three tanks, the two in Rochester or the one in Stockbridge, in terms of when they were installed or how old they are. Um, Who are the oil companies that go on? Uh, Dead River. Dead River, thank right. you. Mm -hmm. For both. It used to be CB Oil. Right. Five the hour. Years now is CB, do you know if CB oil was going to put them in? We're not able to find that out. Yeah. We're still hoping to find that out. It's been a bit of a puzzle. To be frank, we're trying to piece information together. We believe it could have been CB oil. A couple of people told us they thought it was CB oil, but we haven't really been able to get that answer for certain from it. We just haven't been able to. Have you run back with CB oil? And they all have. They're going to, they're, they are going to get back to us. Correct. Right. <laughs> Tony? Tony, can I Yes, yes. yes. All three are buried. So, I'm surprised the state doesn't have a record of when they were put in the ground. Because harvest came to be plotted when they were put, put in. Mm -hmm. every, we every, like every year you have to tell the state, send some money to them and say, I got a tank in the ground. Nobody would. Years. I've been paying taxes for 30 years. And 
I keep hearing these stories about, well, you know, it's passed down by word of mouth, and we don't, we didn't keep records. What are you doing now to keep records going forward? Because I feel the same way. I don't want to hear about these wonderful stories of Stockbridge and we pass it down from generation to generation. I want to see concrete information. And I, I'm totally tired of this, these antics about, because as the flatlander in town, which I've been called, it's, it's very, very disconcerting to find out that none of these records exist. Well, part of the I mean, study, part of the study that we just did is that's yeah. one of the reasons why we did this is the town, the... But what are you doing now going well, now that we have to make sure that next year we don't come to these meetings and we hear the same thing? So we have, we each have this facilities finder and at least when I started, I have to admit there wasn't a lot in the facilities finder. I found more and more this summer as we did some top head to toe cleaning, so to speak. So it's all organized based on what company came in, when they came in, what they did, who we got quotes from for what jobs, things like that. And that just, because we feel the same way, we shouldn't have to start over every single time. Yeah. And so now that's kept up front with myself or Janet, so it doesn't Principal in February um, a few years ago. There were many principals at Rochester before Bonnie Reeves mm -hmm. taken over, and I think that requires leadership, saving those records, organizing those records. That's part of leadership, and we really haven't had it until these two. And now I'm most confident, most confident that they are keeping the records that need to be kept. We didn't do it correctly before, absolutely, but I'm very confident because of that. Because we're learning our lesson, and because they realize that they're keeping even more careful records than they probably would have to be. And I will say the building study, uh, major, uh, your frustration with not having information on the buildings is our frustration as a board. We have been wanting this information, and that was part of the reason to do the building study. So we won't be reinventing the wheel, but there is accountability for the systems and what's going on in our schools. So we have the ability to give, it to not fall apart and have that be redone. That is definitely a major part of the reason the building study was done because we had not a lot of information as a board on when things were maintained. It was just. Do you have SOPs? Do you require no. SOPs, standard operating procedures? Do you have documentation? The requirement for documentation. Not the documentation itself, the requirement and a set format for the way this is all documented. What we're doing is we're starting to build those systems. And um, Tara, our, our new business manager, has really been extremely helpful in that. She's, she and Bruce are doing it from supervisory union end. I know you don't want to hear this word. I'm sorry. Just let me say it quickly and then move on. The mergers of the supervisory unions, two supervisory unions merged. Then our schools merged. While those mergers were going on, there was a lot of turnover. Um, I think that's contributed somewhat to the problem. But with Kara's help, Bruce's direction, Lindy and I are beginning to build the systems that we believe should be there um, so that this can indeed be prevented. But we have to build systems, as you say, that standard operating procedures yeah. that go beyond us. Because five years from now, neither one of us can be sitting here. And I don't want another group of people asking same questions about the same fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. um, we have to do better than that. Right. And when you go back, I mean, I think too, when you talk to people, Steve Martin knew that I had taken a jacuzzi out of my house. <laughs> so there are people at CB Oil who probably know the history, and maybe if you're talking to an administrative person, they may not, but I would go directly to Steve Martin or to, um, you know, one of the other guys who owns that company. So it's going to be Charlie. 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 
Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Exactly. Steve Charlie only on the side of the right. Right, but I mean, they know. Yeah, Ellen would probably. Ellen would. Yes. So just to clarify, up until this moment in time, there's been no accountability for any of these things at all. The principal's office in Stockbridge was pretty much cleared out right before she came. I know that. So right, right, right. Well, no, she, I, I no, found loads of stuff. There is no, I mean, there's some, there's not, and it's, it's it, it, it depends on what was, what was done. I know that we had a, a decent record of uh, we were required to update the water system here with a UV uh, filtration system. Like There's a lot of documentation around that. Binder but is but, but you know, as far as <laughs> as far as like understanding where some of the heating system went and where well, we did uh, some work on this building a few years ago, and um, one of the select board was uh, his wife was on the on the. Jim Shands kind of did clerk the works on some of the updates on, on, on this building. You know, there were things like, why was this particular pipe run never insulated? We don't know, we put insulation on it. So we've been trying to, 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 to fix some of the things as they happen. Part of the problem is again, it, 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 you know, do you spend a lot of money trying to, to, to rebuild uh, uh, systems or you, do you try to keep try to keep the spending um, just to keep things going and not spend the money for a consultant to come in and redraw architect plans that went somewhere. You know, um, figuring out what, what outlets are on what circuit. Do we really need to know that or do we need to know that at least our loads are good and our, our wiring seems decent our, our, our panels are, like the panel, one of the panels in Rochester are just, they're not even made anymore. So there's, there's like a, uh, an obsolescence issue. So we've been, you know, trying to stay on top of it as, 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 as best we can and, you know, uh, working with uh, rotating, uh, you know, some, some uh, rotating people, um, you know, we're trying to do better because you know, it needs to be, it, it, if we're going to, to, to figure out if this is viable, if this is the smartest thing to do, we have to understand the systems that are in place and the buildings and their liabilities and their strengths. And, you know, I think one of the things that also used to happen, and it doesn't happen now, but there used to be a lot more, because the state used to pick up 50% uh, at least of, 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 of school projects, there was, it, it was really easy. You know, you just said, oh, that's broken, I'll get it fixed. And you, 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 you go out and get your three bids, you, you pick the, 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 the lowest competent one, the state would write you a check for half. So I think having that kind of, <coughs> You know, back in the day, having that kind of free money, there wasn't as much of a need where the, the, the people were just like, well, just we'll buy another one. And we're not, we're not going to track and repair it. And that, the state cut that faucet off, what, 10 years ago, Molly? So, probably more than 10. Um, so, you know, and there's, you, there, there's been articles in the paper about just facilities around the state having deferred maintenance issues. So we're certainly, we're, we're, we're certainly not alone, um, but we need to do better because, I mean, I don't want. I we don't. I don't want to throw money into building. You know, throw a ton of money into a building uh, that we may not be using. At the same time, I don't want to let a building that we don't think we might use next year sit and rot, have a roof cave in, and suddenly have to to, to to do like an emergency bond or something because we we, we said ah, it'll be fine one more year. So it's it's getting that kind of information to have the procedures and, and the policies to do to do to do it right. So. And I understand how important that is. I know of a town in Massachusetts that's building a $260 million high school because it's cheaper to maintain the old one or to fix up the old one. And, you know, I'm just seeing it with kind of spotty records of not knowing where the buildings really are. Right. What are you really putting money into? Right. And then I, I, wanted, I wanted to make one thing clear. It goes back to what, what uh, uh, we, were, we were talking about earlier is that you know, the stuff that we're talking about moving forward on is not, you know, right now, is the stuff about keeping the building, the, you know, the building uh, habitable and safe for kids. A lot of the top, top priority items were safety related. Um, you know, we're not, the, 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 the big push is not to renovate a building and make, a cool, make cool classrooms. 
we'd like to do that down the line, and we're not sure where that would go. But right now, the, the really, I swear, cross my heart, um, that we're trying to, the, 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 the focus now is on understanding our buildings and facing the things that, 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 that could be either catastrophic if they failed or dangerous to, to, uh, to, to the kids or just, you know, there's, there's some problems with some of the emergency lighting. We may not be using both buildings in Rochester, but we need to have emergency lighting that works in both of them. So those are the kinds of things that we're that that uh, we're, we're we're moving forward with now, and, and and thinking about now are the things that we would think about with all our buildings: furnace maintenance, roof leaks, uh, broken windows, stuff like that. We're really not using that as a way to 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 leverage us into some rearranging the classroom spaces. Sure. So you're saying if we even if we just use one of the buildings in Rochester, not both, we, we have to keep both buildings up? Or is that what you're saying? What you said? I think what I was trying to say to the board. Did I hear that right? Um, yeah. Julia, what I was trying to say to the board is that you just in especially I guess maybe anywhere, but especially in Vermont, you just can't walk away from the building and leave it empty. It's gonna deteriorate. Well, we either sell it or something that you'll put in the interim until right. a decision well, is made.
including in that survey, survey tell me if I'm wrong, is asbestos and lead survey? Yes. Yes. So was that never done? Ever? There was no, there's, there's been asbestos inspections. There was, there's been an asbestos manual of stockers. I think there was a problem should have with a the book. asbestos menu, menu uh, or uh, um, uh, a manual in Rochester that came up okay. around so, the The lead is, so lead is on the legislature's agenda and we were complying with what they told us to do this year, but that was the new 2018. If that book was, was put together by an engineer who went around and checked for lead and, and yep. tried things off and tested for asbestos. That book is valid and it should continue and it stays with the building. So if you're planning to abate asbestos, you would look at your book and say, the book says there's asbestos in that ceiling. Um, this floor tile has asbestos. So does somebody on this group or somewhere in town or anywhere in the student school union or whatever it's called do things about grants? Could we look for grants for we federal do. money to improve our school, specifically asbestos and lead? It's a big deal. Um, John Commando is paying billions of dollars to people for all of this. There are funds. And I have, think at, the, at the SU level, there's a there's a, a person whose job is, is specifically around grants, mostly educational. So they, 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 we, we look into those yeah. things. We're looking into, uh, for example, one of the things about the generator that we're trying to get in for snow flies here in, in Stockbridge is one of the things that's been holding out of is working to make sure we're getting the maximum grants from Two Rivers on the Quichi and from uh, um, Fisher Sea Vermont. So, is this survey going to recommend abatements of things or encapsulation, or is it going to just give us another survey and say this is what we have? Is it's going it to do, it's going, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch your first name. Tell me, Tell me. Tell me it's going to do, uh, it's going to do some of all that depending on the buildings. We believe that most of the asbestos in Rochester was removed through a previous abatement program but there were some areas that just had question marks on the master document. So as part of this engineering study, we had them go back to those areas to retest, to say either it's there or it's not there or it's encapsulated and it can stay put. It's not a major. Yeah. I'm not anticipating unless, yeah. Either, neither of us are anticipating major issues with asbestos. What I'm thinking is we're putting money that's paying for the RNA survey, that maybe could come from somewhere else. Right. But some we're, of these... We're trying to make sure we can tap yeah, on the That's something we should all be looking into. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we we did get records and documents, so we can be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. We did get a grant from the Efficiency Vermont to put towards uh, this vote evaluation. So. All right, so let's... Uh, I think you guys were around... Two. So on to the generator. Uh, ironically okay. enough. So a couple of things have slowly but surely happened. Um, the company who provided the bid for the generator did want to just check, even though we haven't made any movement, that their sites were okay that they picked. So the fire inspector came in with the company this past week to just confirm everything. As well as I've been working with uh, Two Rivers Regional Commission, which is what Stockbridge belongs to, Planning Commission, and who helps support the process of the emergency grant funding in terms of finding it and what steps we need to take to do that. So we've been working with Lucas and Keith on those steps and information. Right now, it's just a lot of factual information that we need. So will you, like, I'm seeing the AMAC with the select uh, board group. So will you connect, you will let the select them know? I asked, yeah, however okay. we're going to do that, I can do so more just like I got referred from the state to our company and put the bid and the company referred me back to the state and the state referred me to mm -hmm. the planning commission who is finding the right people to connect with. Right. So I think when I asked for the selectmen's help um, that that um, they said they just wanted more information on the price and what the grants could be. Right. So yes, coming Okay. So he was looking for how much electricity we used, and would this be a warming shelter? For how that would operate? Right. Right. Yeah. So now it's an emergency shelter, so it needs to be fully operational. Right. So, so which was the response I had? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, we talked about education.
additional materials that are no longer needed um, in a second. Uh, safety planning in Rochester, we're looking at like to explore the option of having a set of double doors at the beginning of the hallway. Are they not there anymore? They're further down the hallway. We're talking about right at the very beginning of the hallway so that we could lock them during the day and youngsters could still have access to the office. Right now, right now, if we lock them, they're between the office and the, um, the main entrance, the start of the hallway. And this is to um, lock during the day or is it to lock down? No, during the day. But we do have locks on the exterior doors. Right, right. But otherwise, the kids right now are separated from the office. If the door, if we lock the doors, the kids are separated from the office, from the drinking fountain, and from all those things. So we basically we can't lock them right now. So we're looking at moving them up the hallway about 15 feet. And we had gotten we had gotten some grant money for safety funding. Is that all allocated? Uh, that road grant funding, that that round of grant money, we've already allocated. Spent, so we're waiting for the states. The second round we were not eligible for because we were granted funds in the first round. There's supposedly going to be a third round and we're going to be ready to hop on that, which is why we're trying to get cost estimates for what this project might cost. Yeah. Because sometimes those timelines are call for a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah, no, I, I, and the, 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 in general, in my experience with the states when they cut, when they have a safety grant like that, if you're, you know, if, if you filled it out and you met the, met the criteria and you hit that 72 hour window or whatever when they want that paperwork in, you'll get it. So it'd be really, it'd be really excellent. And the reason we're asking to start early on this, I'm just going to explain yeah. this piece because it's related to Rochester, is that there is, um, there is some historical attachment to some of the things that we would have to move and relocate, namely uh, some very old trophies that are in there from, from Rochester High School's way back history. So we would be working with the Historical Society and anybody who's interested to help us decide what's a respectful way to relocate this. Uh, we have to go slowly forward as we move some of these things. Um, and we just don't want to, you know, rush in like bulls in a china shop. But uh, we have to relocate, we have to take the trophy case down and do something with, with the trophies that are in it. So that's why we want to start early and proceed. Know, in a reflective sort of way. And I assume that we're going to hear about this again before anything actually starts happening. All we want the board to know is that we're looking into it or we're looking for a contractor who can come and even tell us if it's even possible. Okay. And then at that point, we look for estimates. Then we come back to the board and say, looks like we're ready to move forward. We're going to hold off as long as we can on the grant cycle. And then if we don't get grants, we'll be back. And, and in the meantime, you want us to be aware so it's on the historical society tell someone else if you can start telling them. Is that some sort of a security regulation with the double doors? I'm just picturing our hall down here. We lock our exterior doors, but we don't have a set of double doors at yours. So we're in, when I asked about the double doors here, we would have to do some other components because the way my office is set up, so even if we did the double doors that forced everyone into the main office, similar to what she's talking about, um, they would still have access through my office into the rest of the building. So is it a regulation or are we choosing to do that? We're choosing to do that. We're, we're choosing to look into that. Actually, for both schools, we started looking into it, and that's when we came up with this, uh, what do we call it, challenge of where are these offices. Um, that's not to say we shouldn't still look into that. Um, there are a few regulations in safety training. There are a lot of strongly recommended steps that folks who have learned over the last several years of safety planning are, would recommend that we that we look at and try and put in place. So I think that's why they put that extra door in the principal's office, um, where it goes through from the secretary's office to the mm -hmm. principal's office, because they didn't used to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just one that didn't go up the other. Right. It just well, if you went into the secretary's office and then yeah, went out to go around to the principal's office. Oh, I see. The door that that goes to right mm -hmm. the road. Uh, but I mean, lockdown is important. So I. Have, I don't have the school set up, so that's mm -hmm. you know,
what it would take to offer before and after care for preschool programs. Right now we have, um, yes, there's after school program, but it does not, their license is not for preschoolers. We're really even though like it's not great to be asked for a full day for four year olds, it's still really tough for some parents to meet the bus at 3.15. So um, just what that would look like. And in Rochester, we have extended day, but but not full day. So we right. want to tell one. It's only it's eleven thirty for some youngsters, and more. Than more than <laughs> I think that's critical. I, did, I mean, the kids that, that I have at my little house, they couldn't come to school right. until one time it started. So, and I think as the board is interested in everyone in our committee, communities are interested in attracting more families to our communities. Um, what really attracts families to communities are jobs and the ability to have their children well cared for. And we both have preschool models now that work for parts of the population but do not work for other parts of the population. Working moms and dads find it very difficult to have their youngsters attend our preschools because of the midday. If you don't have an extended family that includes you know, a grandparent or an aunt or um, we still have youngsters every year who don't attend our preschools because of transportation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and even we're finding our three-year-old numbers decrease because half day is difficult. Mm -hmm. And three o'clock isn't much easier for a lot of families. So. Mm -hmm. Many folks work till five. As if we can capture these kids in preschool, we're, we're more likely to retain them. Yeah. Through. Absolutely. So what we're looking for there is just the board's understanding that we're going to start pursuing what this means. Um, we can't even make any sort of presentation to the board yet because we haven't even started looking into it. What are the challenges? What are the upsides? What are the downsides? So we would just uh, like the board's support in letting us just move forward and try and figure out what this might look like.
Toby? Pardon me for not, because I'm not tuned in. Now my kids are they're gone. But the after school program, is that part of the school budget? No. No. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. I go to work, I can drop kids off and go to work and it doesn't cost me anything. The town makes a contribution to that. Tax uh, so that we get wow. parents. No, parents. Oh, wow. Yes, they we, do. we also In this world, we want business here. Right. But what we're doing is we are telling people no business. We don't want business on Route 100. We don't want any over here. We don't want any over there. Oh my God. They did. Did they drop this year? Um, I don't know. How, I, not by much. But they get a great deal of their funding paid. She said it dropped. Right. But not, but not well, 100. Not, well, not, it drops not every year C. and then not, it starts again. Right? Not, no. not 21C did drop. That's, what they, that's the funding they get. Us and our other grants drop. Okay. Yes. Our other grant funding dropped. The grant specifically for the one plan after school programs, my understanding is, did not drop. Did it cover driving the bus? Rochester to Stockers and then Bethel for, for swim lessons and then come back and all that in the middle. Yeah, that's right. that the programming, programming, the programming was built into that. Uh, yeah. And what is the difference between what it's paid for and the parents pay and what the taxpayers pay? How much well, is one plan that has its own budget yes. and it's run by its own board? Right. So I, I would have to go to them to get more specific because well, it's not. I don't think but it's, isn't that it that all in our tax bill? No, no, they, well, they asked for a supplemental um, amount of money from the district. And the town, too, I think. Right. The town, I think that but they were charity companies. Okay. That's, that's no. very, very insignificant compared to what they did. Right. But to clarify, it's not in the SU assessment. No. What you're asking. Oh, it's not. It's part of a line of but it, it's it's an amount that we contribute. It's like right. ten thousand dollars that from our budget goes into the one planet's budget, and then the town votes ten thousand dollars from Stockers, ten thousand dollars from Rochester. Right. I don't know what those numbers actually are. So please don't quote me. Okay. Those numbers, but that is how it's I'm contributed. I'm shocked that a bus goes all over, and I'm just wondering what that bus is. Well, it provides more kids to come, which provides more funding to get to them, which provides more kids in our area, and. I mean, child care is a big issue. Yeah, it, it I paid for my own, and I think most people my age did. Correct. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I had one. If you can encourage us, three-year-olds, to come to school for all day, you're then having to have buses that have got to have car seats on them, because those kids have got to be there. They've got to have seatbelts on those school buses. Some of those school buses are so tight, I would hate to put my child in a car seat there and have it go forward because there is not even enough room. I right. rode on one a few weeks ago in Burlington and there was not even enough room. In the there are RC belts on the bus. Oh, and that's time. where the... And then, then you're going to have to have a bus monitor. I would be, if I was a parent that was sending a child that little, I would be wanting one. You do 
have it all the time. So Stockbridge does provide transportation, but Rochester does not. So we do not bus preschoolers in Rochester. Which, your point is a very good one. Those are all things that we have to look into right. if we're talking about extended day or before care, after care, summer care. And since uh, bus issues, four year olds can ride without seatbelts. Because I've gone through this just in the last two or three days. And, and we've looked into it. We've talked to Butler about it. Uh, the regulations allow those kids to be in seats. I'm not sure about three-year-olds, but four-year-olds can ride without seatbelts. They can ride in a car. Yeah, that's great. Well, nobody can ride in a car without a seatbelt. It is the law for all of us.
this is probably going to make more sense to the Rochester folks than the Stockbridge folks. Um, we had to move it when we sold the dandelion the, the dandelion daycare, and the land immediately adjacent to the southern side of the driveway is flat. It was a great place to have the sign. The only dilemma is we no longer own that property. The land to the left of the driveway drops off rapidly. Um, I went out there with a contractor and he said, Bonnie, it's going to have to be so far down the bank to be out of the states right away and away from the snow plows when you're zipping through 100 and throwing snow up that nobody's going to be able to reach up and put the letters on it. It's not that tall of a sign. The other suggestion I think that came up from someone was to see if it could be relocated down into the parking lot. In Rochester, there's this barrier and this fence that separates the bus line from the cars. The only place that's even a little bit feasible down there is right at the end of that barricade. And the drivers are a bit concerned about what that does to their line of sight for cars coming into the parking lot. And it would have to, it would have to be, it couldn't be perpendicular to Room 100. It would have to be parallel to it, which means you have about one and a half seconds as you're going by to read it. You wouldn't be able to see it the whole way as you're approaching it, which is what you used to be able to do. It would be, have to be placed this way. So it's not very practical to try and relocate, <coughs> try and relocate that particular sign. Someone has brought up the idea we should look in, I guess there's a number of schools who've got these digital signs that you program from inside the school office and um, yeah, remote programming. Uh, there's a the possibility of looking into that. One school told me they paid like $4,200 for theirs. I don't know if we feel that strongly about having it put back, but at this point, it just doesn't seem feasible to put that marquee sign back up. Is there a reason why you can't put it back further in that little median? Uh, because there's a cement barrier right there, yeah, so that's I'm like not vision yet. I that's that's, as, that's as far back as it can go, because that's what separates the buses from the cars. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm like not visioning how big right. it is. Right. So. It's, it's too big for here. Yeah, it um, doesn't seem practical. So the issue. Uh, I think we, we talked that there was one other option of possibly talking with people who own the property. There's sometimes they're dead on the property. And possibly they would let us put it back there. The other option would be to figure out, as Mason's made the point several times, um, how do we communicate that? Because if you're not going to have the marquee, then communication still has to happen. It's, you know, I was one of the ones who drove by here who when school started because I drove by to stop from school. Um, it was not happening at Rochester, and that's just we need to have an alternative. If it's up on the green, and the town allows us to put it there, or something else. That's you know, um, just just the, just because we keep getting a closed door, I think Mason's point is we need to be communicating for the public. Uh, I do feel strongly that prior, it's the past tense, but. Uh, before it was taken down, it should have had a new location and, and put it up as, as soon as it was taken down, put it up. It just was so frustrating to see it get thrown behind the school building and forgotten about. It actually didn't get thrown back there. Well, it got a place back there. It doesn't matter. It's a piece of equipment that got abandoned. And the adage for me, what I've seen is a sta just stall, stall, stall. And let's get a solution and just give it back to the taxpayers. Uh, it does communicate to a lot of taxpayers who are not parents. It makes a difference for us to know when things are happening. It would make a difference too for just our PTO and we struggle with attendance of things. So I, I, I do would like to see some kind of remedy to having a sign for the school because we're, we're missing out on participation rate. I hadn't even thought of this idea about approaching the town to see if there's some place we can put up uh, yeah. a sign. Because more there are folks who don't come down south of the green. They come to the green, they, they go to the cafe, they get, they go back north. So that's yeah. a yeah, we have a town green. You know, we want to promote our schools. I mean let's go there. Yeah, here. Okay. Have you approached the underlying agents about just using that? That idea, just, that idea just came up tonight. Let's try them. Because they're not using it, but it, you just have to have a maintenance agreement and give them a dollar a year or three hundred every event if or whatever. So, you know. If they're so amenable. Yeah, if they're amenable. And we can put it right back in the exact same place. Yeah. Or they can use it as well. Maybe. So there are some options. Family reunion. <laughs> 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 
ago, I got something in the mail asking for volunteers for the school. Filled it out very diligently. There's a lot of things that I felt like my husband and I could offer. Nothing happened. I'm assuming that that paper went by the way of everything else that I'm hearing about tonight in Stockbridge. But how does somebody who lives in the town of Stockbridge who could offer educational programs for children become a volunteer? Um, all we ask is that you just come into the office and fill out the paperwork right then and there, and then we can start to figure it out. Okay. Don't they need a the for the thing in the room check? So that, that's yeah, the paperwork not that they, that's the paperwork they fill out on site in front of us. So that's mm -hmm. what we Yeah, I had a lot of my adaptive volunteer. I got back on the checks. We loved it. I got a lot of file with the FBI. And if you ever
and we acknowledge that. It's a hit against us. Um, and you know, I, th I think we handled it pretty well, but don't trust us because we tell you certainly. You know, trust us because it shows up the next year and, and, we, and, we, and we start actually showing results. So just all we can ask for is patience. One quick note on the community um, involvement. I think it'd be great if we could maybe put it to the Herald. Just to, again, like just make a recommendation to let people know if people want to volunteer. Right. School started again. We yeah. love to hear from people who are just I think you guys yeah. have the DOs that need that we can use Stockbridge connections too. I don't get it. I don't get the Herald. And I found out today about a lot of things that I didn't, I never knew that the Herald is the official newspaper for all Stockbridge meeting minutes. Never knew that. It's actually one of the things you, every year you have to vote what your radio station is, what your newspaper is, where the places are you post the, 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 the minutes and the, uh, or sorry, the warnings. Um, so yeah, there's, it's, it's that the, you, we do have to vote on the paper every year. And I highly recommend the, the Herald. It's a great way to keep up on this whole entire area of what's going on. All right. I just want to say, um, we need that these two right here will always answer their phone. They will always have an answer. If they don't have it, they will get back to you. And it is by far the best duo we've had in
I never spoke with Lori. I never spoke with Lori directly. This was from speaking with my the town clerk in Rochester on how difficult the job was to get up and running at the very beginning. Um, we just felt that we won't even put that pressure, that it uh, be a pressure. Okay, so I think we've, we've, we've 
for the subcommittee to, to, to go forward. We need to uh, get some community members uh, on that. Gee, mm. anyone interested in being on that committee, Joanna? Yes, I would. I'm so Right, 
do we now? Well, we're we're doing doing a policy. We're doing a policy for Stockbridge. Yeah. Well, it's, it's Rochester's policy. Yeah, I guess, yeah. We just need to adapt it. It's right. our policy. Yeah. 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 October for those policies that need to be looked at. Uh, the policy committee, we have an SG policy committee that meets. Right. Um, I don't know who your delegate is here. Which um, is me. So I'm, it's either the what? Uh, October 3rd or 4th, whichever Thursday that, whichever one of those two days is Thursday. And we will meet at the SU uh, at 6 o'clock to look at the policy. I know there's a Several that have come in as the policy committee needs to look at. The SU policy committee is separate from the SU board. Yeah. They're, they're it's members of the members of the full, full, yeah. full SU. Um, is this still part of what we were paying Steve Dale for? Is this no. a new bill we're paying no, Steve no, Dale? No, no, or is he not involved at all? He's not involved at all. Okay. So we're, 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 Sure, well, let me give you the copy of the policy that already, uh, that's already uh, exists in the past. And then we will uh, put it in front of the, the SU. And you would have a line that says your district, not, not anybody else's policy. We're just talking about you guys. Right. Well, I think, I mean, given that Stratford has a long standing way that they tuition kids, it's way different than the way we do it. They're being asked to put theirs together. You know, so I think, I think trying to say let's come up with an SU policy that one size fits all will not happen. No. Um, so, all right. right. So we need to look at what the current policy is and just maybe adapt, uh, adopt it to the new district. I think there's the policy and then there is right. the what are parents going to look for when they move into town. And what right. we hear you asking us to do is right, and what are parents going to look for when they move into town. Right. Well, well, we we just heard, heard, which is which is marketing piece, so getting into, um, what's his name, the new web guy, um, Ray. 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 There's a meeting Monday for us to begin to talk about, and we hope to turn this around very quickly, uh, a new RSUD website, so that it's up to date for all schools. That, that, that would be great. It'd be great to have a link for, uh, switching students out, which is where they can have fun information locally, how to register students. All right, that uh, brings us through the uh, agenda with the exception of the executive session. Uh, didn't you have seven, six, oh, seven, 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 Oh, that's, oh, yes, I completely, I didn't write them down, I completely fell out of my head. Um, I, this is something I'd like, uh, our administrator, we were having a conversation about um, whether there's, whether there's uh, a majority of kids in a certain age group at one campus and another, and is that, is that the best if there's only one fourth grade or two fourth graders in Rochester or only one second grader in Stockbridge, um, is the best thing for those kids to say, well, you're in your town's building, um, or are there ways that we could figure out how that would, would work if we decided to try to, to have a way to, to bring them together so that they're with a bigger cohort of their peers. And I think it's really important that we do that, not for anything that's happening now, but I think it's important that we thought about that and put together a policy that, that uh, exists and supports that when there's not a family attached to whatever that situation might be. So that, that, that we're saying, here's what our thoughts are about, about uh, 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 keeping kids in, in, in groupings. Um, so you're asking for the principals to take right. their, in their, their professional opinion on is it better for it for one second grader to stay in one location versus join the all or larger group of second graders? Right, or send, or send second grader if you've got, so if second you've got, if you've got nine second graders in one school and one second grader in the other, you know, do you move the one up with the nine? Do you move a few oh, right. down down to have a to, to have a bigger group? 
But I think what 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 are, what are the educational people say about that before we before we're, we're faced with a situation like that that's that's brought to the board as a political discussion and not as a as a as an education. So just just to clarify, Carl, what you're looking for, Lindy and I, is our opinion on that. You're not really looking for a policy. No, no, no. But, uh, just want our thoughts. An opinion and thought about how that would work. If that's really something that, that really is a major problem, then if, you know, is, is that something where you just said it's not that great when there's when there's you know one or two kids of, of a particular age group? Okay. What to do about the shoulder communities? Because like when we were in multiple, when my daughter was in one of the multi-age classes. There were, you know, there was a ton of the kids that were a year younger than her, um, and and so the fact that there were only like you know, three of her age meant that she was still in a big classroom because you know she had she had just you know peers that were a year younger. But understanding how that you know how that would look before some weird situation pops up. So what you're asking for is the educational value of class size, correct? Yes, as it determines to us, not just as, not just as, um, just in general, you know, um, uh, class size, but just understanding if, you know, having some idea of what we would do in a situation like that before the situation like that shows up, I think would be a good idea. Uh, and then the last thing I put on there, right, was just was talking about. Uh, can we get some information? We, we must know what. I'll tell you what I have. Okay. I have a folder that I found. Okay. Titled Rochester Dandelion Building Sale. Okay. In it <laughs> is the settlement statement. Is the what? Settlement statement from the sale. Oh. And the confirmation that the funds were deposited. Seventy thousand. 
the motion that the motion will we receive the funds we put it in that general education fund? That would have been, that would have been a Rochester motion, Yeah, that was before the merger. Oh, that's what the motion was. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of that. And we were just looking for like the specific language of the fund. So yeah, I think understanding the specific language of the fund and being able to, to say definitively, we had a piece of property, we, we sold it, we we you know we got this much for it, and here's what we did with it. Here's how the board handled it. Being able to trade and that. Okay, I, I if we definitely... had any idea if there was any major. I mean, I think part of the other question that I at least understood Joanne to be asking was was there substantive work done to the building? You know. To, um, to make it sellable, or did no, we no, there was a, so, we, we, we moved the preschool playground. Right, and and we, we were paying for that. We made the motions to, 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 to and, that. And then we uh, needed to uh, create a, a part of the yeah. fence. We put a, a fence so that we right. separated and the property. And what is the question, did that come out of the fund? I'm sure it all came out of the sale, like, like the things you have to do when it's closed, you have to fix that. Light switch or whatever. But no, what I'm, what I'm, I think would also be interested in knowing is if there was, you know, if if there had been any any, any sort of major work done to the building right before we sold it. Not, like you sell not the school to sell it, but there was a major stuff done to it prior to um, in years before because we were trying to set it up as a aftercare daycare. Right, right. I understand we did so that work. Was, or you guys did that work. Right. So there was okay. money put in, but that was not um, offset by the sale price or anything. That was that was a couple of years before. Right. Yeah. That was, that was already been invested in working on to invest in. A lot of that labor was good. I also, I just, I guess what what I, what I was getting at is I was seeing the emails and the the, the, the questions and the concerns. And I think it's I, I want us to be able to. When we do sit down in the community meeting, being able to have as many of these things squared away so we have a clean story, we know what's going on, we're able to say, here's what really happened, here's what, you know, here's where these things went, so that we're not in these meetings about the future, we're not rehashing um, you know, some of the details about the past. So I just think getting, getting an understanding and getting those documents together in advance of starting this, this committee, I think, would be. I was just curious why, when the vote was, because that's what well, we said, we voted. Well, that, there's no documentation anywhere that you vote. Well, they think the vote, the, the, the Rochester vote would have been taken by Rochester. Board. No, I believe Joanne is talking about what I was just going to oh, say. Is the, is the payment of the study with the, the sale, with the proceeds from the sale, is is that what we want to do? Is that... Is that... Yeah. Oh, well, this is a discussion. I don't... See, I think... I think we left it up to them to pay for it. I don't think we ever made specific instructions. I don't think we, it wasn't up to us. It wasn't a problem. It's not why you said quickly, grab that and ran with it. And everybody agreed with it. When it no, was a trigger. No, I don't think it was. Well, it did. I watched it. I, I was sitting there, and, it, and when I asked where did the money come from, I heard it was from the sale of the day. If, if it, we are to show who's any money from fund, doesn't the board need to discuss and actually make a motion on record about it? If it was truly set up as a, as a reserve fund. Okay, so we need to verify and how it is best practice. So we need to know how it was transferred from. Best practice to take action. We need to know how it was transferred from the reserve fund, the Rochester reserve fund, was transferred to the RSUD. Right, they would have been part of your article. It would have been part of the merger. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have been part yeah, of the merger. Part of that whole merger thing that the sale the sale was after the merger. Yeah, the sale was after the merger. 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 The sale was after
that's when the that's when the RGB became official. In our minutes of October second. 2018, so back in 2018, there's an item where we talked about the Dandelion Daycare. Um, it was, uh, there was a question regarding whether any funds from the sale of the Dandelion Daycare could fund the facility assessment uh, that we were hoping to have conducted by an architect or an engineer. Amy noted that the Dandelion Daycare funds went into an education fund. This is a generic fund funds could be used for such. And I'm going to keep looking with that. Right, so again, the word is could be. Right, so and potentially we could, but I think we right. need to all decide on that and make a, a, make a real choice right. about that. So let's, let's, let's put that on as, let's put that on as, as a, as a right. item of action for October. Figure out where we're paying for that. We should hopefully have the final bill by then. We'll have the final report. Um, will, we can uh, decide where that comes from then. Yeah, I think, I think where the confusion came is sort of a, sort of a language issue. I know uh, people, it certainly sounds like we all, not we, the board all agreed that the underlying funds could be used for the study. No official vote was taken, but yet everybody remembers, remembers, yes, we agreed that that was a possible source of funding. So that may be where the mix up And, and it was true, because we didn't want to go into this and be like, well, we have no money to pay for this. We can, well, but we had it. Thank you.